Thank you. This is wonderful. Now I'll ask my question. With all this credible legal evidence against Bill, Bill Ayers, Bernadine, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, why aren't they all in the FEMA camps right now? Is it our legal system that infiltrated or intimidated? I'll hang up and get my answer. Yeah, that's a good question, uh, yeah. Larry. When the police get these new manuals saying the founders are bad and returning vets are terrorists and gun owners are evil, I mean, I've, I've talked to police. I think that's finally waking them up. Yes, I do, too. Uh, you know, especially the, the, the people who believe in the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. The reason that the weathermen were not prosecuted was on a legal technicality. Uh, the evidence was uh, thrown out because, uh, according to the court, that was obtained illegally. Uh, and as a matter of fact, two FBI agents, uh, uh, Miller and, um, uh, Lord, I forget his name, Deep Throat. Uh, what was his name? Come on. It doesn't matter. It's on record. I, yeah. Well, anyway, they, they were... They were prosecuted and convicted. I testified at their trial for the defense. Mark Felt, Mark Felt, Ned Miller, uh, two FBI agent uh, supervisors. Uh, so you know, you talk about an irony. The weathermen walk free, and the uh, agents that were protecting uh, our our country were uh, prosecuted and convicted. Ronald Reagan pardoned them. Uh, but exactly, uh, again, you can kill police and you don't get in trouble. Uh, again, these communists are backed by powerful people, is my point. Oh, yes, absolutely. And uh, uh, they, they right now, because we, we haven't really uh, fought against them, uh, they're succeeding. I think, if the vast, I think the vast majority of Americans are patriots. And if they wake up to what's happening, I think it'll it'll you know it'll be Yeah, I think Fast and Furious has almost done that. We're going to break in forty seconds, but Matt in California, what's your question? We'll come back and answer it. Matt, go ahead. Hey Alex, Larry. Yeah. Uh, wasn't wasn't Andrew Breitbart uh gonna be putting out some wasn't he gonna put out a video with Obama and Bill Ayers together? <laughs> Uh, isn't that why he was um, um, suicided? Yeah, yeah, killed? no, he said he met with Ayers, which was crazy, uh, rest in peace, and that he was going to break this big news. He knows it never really came out. I mean, that, I mean, now that was clearly, well, uh, we're going to get Mr. Grafwall's uh, take on that on the other side. One more little segment, a few more calls straight ahead. I'm Alex Jones of InfoWars.com. This is the end. This is the end of our interview with Larry Grafwald, but his website's linked up at Infowars.com. I want to hurry to a few callers here, but, but just briefly, Breitbart. I mean, when they said within less than two hours, natural causes, go back to sleep, he was supposed to release this stuff of Obama at communist meetings the next morning. Then they, three weeks later, released some milk toast thing with a professor. Uh, what do you think was happening there? Well, I think... I. Ironically, I talked to Andrew Breitbart the night that he went to dinner, that dinner party with uh, uh, Bernadine Dorn and Bill Ayer. Uh, he called me to get information about those two characters. And uh, during that conversation, he uh, told me that he was going, he was creating a, um, uh, a documentary and that he was going to be getting back in touch with me. Uh, I know I've talked to some people who are associates of Breitbart, and they assure me that his death was not a a, a, a murder. He he did die of natural causes, but uh, it's it, I too am, am suspicious because after he makes the statement that he's going to release all of this information, he dies. What about a week later or two weeks later? By the way, we just showed a photo. It's Tucker Carlson and the reporter that confronted me at Bilderberg with them at the party. Very interesting, Tucker Carlson. Uh, let's uh, go to a caller here real quick. Eric in Mississippi, thanks for holding. You're on the air with our guest. Go ahead. Hello. Um, my question is uh, to uh, Mr. Larry would be, um, being here in Mississippi, I was looking uh, months ago at all the... Uh, the new militia movement, you know, over the last few years. And um, I was wondering, what are your thoughts on how, one, how, how infiltrated are these, are all these things? And uh, 
Second, you know, um, after the U.N. gun ban and all, uh, if they go for a rollout in the rural areas, what do you think What do you think they'll opt for, just to bankrupt and starve out? or? Yeah, no, I think it's a bankrupt, starve out. That's always the communist model, and that's yeah. what they're setting up for. Larry comments on that. That's, I agree. And, and it, you know, there's possibilities that, that individuals and in, uh, uh, groups will be signaled out and, uh, uh, you know, there'll be some kind of violent confrontation. But for the most part, I think it'll be isolation. And uh, and you know bankrupt them, discredit them, uh, you know with and use IRS audits and things like that. Or That's stage cool. events and blame it on us. Let's go to Julio in Illinois. You're on the air with our guest Larry Grafwall. Go ahead. Um, I think Chicago is primed for a false flag attack. I, I remember the story came out in September, but with Fast and Furious, there's a little sting out in Indiana where the ATF allowed a gun shop in Indiana to let guns be purchased by gang members, and it was then shifted into Chicago and given to the Chicago gangs. And then the reason I bring yeah, this up right. is... Yeah, that's right. The Fast and Furious is arming gangs all over the country. Yes. And the reason I bring this up is because the sugar daddy, Rahm Emanuel, uh, we all know the former chief of staff of Obama, they're going to set up, obviously, this militarized police state zone in the city. So I wanted to ask your guest his thoughts on maybe Chicago being it, because I think from a psychological and sociological perspective, if they have a false flag in Chicago, it's quote unquote Barry Satoro, Obama's hometown, happening under sure. A so Jewish they can grand Manual. Yes, yeah, yeah, so they can grandstand as saviors. There, a, a good question. Um, what do you think of Emanuel and the Chicago Mafia? Oh well, I mean, we all know about Chicago politics, and it's been that way. <clears throat> pardon me for decades. Um, and as as far as Chicago being the epicenter, I think it'll depend upon you know, what events transpire in other locations in the country. They're going to use events to their to their benefit. What, who was it, Rahm Emanuel? Don't let a good crisis go yeah, to waste. That's right. That's right. I want to ask you a question or, 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 or to repeat what you said as a psychologist, as a combat veteran, you know, with a lot of life skills, street skills as well, in the minute we have left, Larry. We were talking during the break, and so-called liberals, because so-called conservatives have their problems too, but when you watch... MSNBC or you read their books, all they do is talk about how smart they are and how dumb everyone else is. Yes. And and I mean, are they not on average typecasting them? Egomaniac power trippers, they're not even really liberals. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. And and the uh, I think the absolute epitome of that was uh, Chris Matthews after the election making that comment about when Barack Obama speaks, he gets a tingle up his leg. And I wonder if he realized how stupid that sounded. Uh, but, of course, in his arrogance, he thinks that he's, you know, one of the smartest people in the country. Uh, yeah, it's like a mutual admiration society. Yes, yes. so mutual admiration society. I, I agree. Larry, let me say bye to you during the break. We're going to come back with Shooter Jennings' song that he gave to us to use in our Police State 4 film. Uh, the Summer of Rage. That's, of course, uh, Waylon Jennings' son. And then we're going to go to more of your calls and a bunch of news straight ahead. Larry, let me say bye to you during the break here. We're on the march. The Empire's on the run. That is Shooter Jennings. That was his album that came out a couple of years ago. That's in my film, Police State 4, The Rise of FEMA. See, they, they wanted this all to be one-dimensional, like either you're against the police and military or you're for them or you're either left or you're right. It's about truth. It's about each issue, what's right and wrong. And it's more sophisticated than that. Our police and military are under the control of different bureaucracies, different systems that our special interest and want to grow. But at the heart of all of this, there are people that want to end our society as you know it, and bring in a communist collective, which are the most horrible systems the world has ever seen. And, you know, there's the famous case of the New York Times writer who was a communist. I forget his name. The story's famous. He's over in the Ukraine, and the communists have just killed 10 million people, and he's surveying how wonderful it is. And he says to the other American communists, well, they've killed 10 million people in just a year. They're killing millions more. Uh, and he goes, well, you got to break a few eggs to make an omelet. And he said, yeah, but where's the omelet? Well, let me add to the quote. It's not about omelets or eggs. It's about breaking eggs. 
These people love running other people's lives. And I was saying bye to Larry Grathwald, and uh, I said, what's up next for you? And he said, well, I'm following Bill Ayers. See, I couldn't go to dinner with Bill Ayers. I mean, I, mean, I physically couldn't be around him. Uh, th there would be a confrontation. Uh, I mean, it's just such a cowardly little piece of trash, sending people out to like just, I mean, you know what? If somebody, if a cop killed your, somebody in your family and did it wrong, got away with it, and then you, you know, got justice one way or another, that's one thing. But to just blow up some police sergeant for no reason because you're going to start the revolution, it's just sick. And I, I was asking him because he's a psychologist about the psychology of these people, and he, he said he's going to follow them around, uh, but that takes support. And so I'd love to see those YouTube videos. You got to get somebody to go with you with a camera. It'll have a lot bigger effect if you do that, Larry. Uh, but people can go to your website and donate so that you can follow Bill Ayers around uh, as he goes and speaks at universities and places and is hailed as a really sexy, cool uh, hero. So tell us briefly about that. Well, in, in fact, I have had a couple of occasions to be in the same room with Bill at various universities and I've stood in line for my opportunity to ask him questions, and he always manages to end the question and answer session and duck out the back door. Uh, so he knows who I am, although he claims he doesn't know me. Uh, but anyway, I would ask people to uh, to donate if they can. Um, my, my objective is to appear where he appears, and given the opportunity, I intend to confront him with some difficult questions concerning the contradictions that exist in, in his activities today and what I know he did in the past. Well, we got a lot of we are changers out there who are for real change who go, go confront these globalists. Maybe they can email you and hook up with you and uh, help you because that's what we do. That's what I've pioneered is going and asking real questions of these people at point blank range like Janet Reno and uh, countless others for what they did at Waco, where they were trying to kick off a government attack, you know, picking a group they thought would be unpopular. Briefly, what's your view on Waco? Waco, I well, I think the government overreacted. It, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm not sure that I agree with uh, 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 David Karish was his name. No, 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 of course. I mean, I, uh, that's what I'm saying. They picked a group that they knew was unpopular to roll out their Southern Poverty Law Center attack on, you know, uh, groups that were anti-government. It was an attempt to open up a, like a not, not like a war on drugs, but like a war on patriots. So, yes, they picked, uh, you know, a group that they could demonize. And, and, and the process wound up killing a good number of people. The, the, the tactical application of what they did had certain predictability, in my opinion, and that was that the the uh, Branch Davidians were going to resist, and that there was a very good likelihood that that a lot of them were going to die. How long would have it taken to sit there and wait for, for them people to eventually come out peacefully? Well, Koresh went into town every day. They had multiple businesses. He jogged off the property every morning. Yes. I mean, it. it just doesn't make any sense. It wasn't necessary. Um, and uh, well, we got the ATF documents where they wanted to get. They were about to get their agency cut uh, or their funding cut, and so they wanted a big PR stunt. Well, and, yeah, and, and that's what you're talking about when you say that there's vested interest. The, the there's certain organizations, including law enforcement, that are so intent upon making a name for themselves that they forget what their real purpose is. And, you know, they ride around in cars that say to protect and serve. Well, w what about protection? That has to be the focus and, and burning that place down or the activities that resulted in the place burning down were predictable 